one, two. Testing, testing, testing. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Good morning, Baptist Temple. Good morning to all those who are on Facebook live stream. What a mighty God we serve. We're going to start off with our worship team, praise and worship.
Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. We'll now have our announcements by Sister Darty Scott. After which we will be singing our hymn, Oh, How I Love Jesus. And then we'll have scripture by Deaconess Tina McNeil. And then we're going to ask if Deacon McLendon, I'm sorry. That's it. <laughs> Ooh, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And then we'll have prayer <laughs> by uh, Deacon Barber in that order.
because he first loved me. We're going to ask if everyone can stand. Everyone can stand for the scripture, the word of God. Everyone. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. I did not trust the sweetest fame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. Precious Father, we just stopped by for a little while this morning to praise you. Because when I think on the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for us. Our soul cries out hallelujah, thank you Jesus this morning because of who you are and what you are in our lives. We don't know how long we got to, to go down here, Father, but while we are here, we're going to lift your name. We're going to praise you. We're going to worship you. We're going to give you the highest praise because of who you are. Oh, Father God, we love you today. We love you because you first loved us. Now, Father God, we ask you to bless the preacher man this morning. From the crown of his head to the tip of his toes. But you know him, Father God. You hired him, Father God. So you know what he can do, Father. We ask you this morning, Father God, that you rain down on him, Father God, like you never had before. We ask you, Father God, that you give him what he needs this morning, Father God, and then give the congregation what they need, Father God, to hear your word, Father God. We love you today, Father. And then we ask you to bless the pastor of this church, Pastor Cornell Williams. 
We ask you to touch his heart, mind, body, and soul. We ask you to touch his help, make Sister Williams. Yes. Because you know, Father, you know all things. And this morning, we just give you the praise, Father God. Because when we think on the goodness of you and all that you've done for us and all that you're doing for us and all that you're going to do for us, our soul cries out, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, this morning, Father God. We love you today, Father God. We love you, Father God, because you first loved us, Father God. We love you today, Father God. I don't know how long I'm going to be here. But while I'm here, while I'm here, Father God, people are going to know that I'm saved and washed in the blood of the Lamb because I'm going to praise you, Father. I'm going to praise you in the good times. I'm going to praise you in the bad times. I'm going to praise you all the time, Father God, because of who you are and what you are in our lives. Because your grace and your mercy has brought us this far. And we're leaning on you, Father. We're leaning on you just a little while longer, Father God. We ask you to bless their waiting congregation, Father. Touch our minds, body, and soul, Father. And let us hear what the preacher has to say. It's in Jesus' name. It's in Jesus' name. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Preaching time, y'all. Preaching time, y'all. What a mighty God we serve that he will allow our pastor, allow us to be able to have time to preach God's word to the people of God. We're about to have a word from God from our own minister, Mark Logan. We ask all those, pray for him, pray with him as he preached the word of God. We need some teaching, we need some learning, we need some instruction from the word of God. So after we have uh, a selection from our praise team, you will be hearing none other than our own minister, Mark Logan. Hear ye him.
Amen, amen, amen. Good morning, Baptist Temple. It's a blessing to be in the house of the Lord another time. We may be low in numbers, but we are still mighty in power. I don't know about you, but the enemy has been working all week and all morning. But we have to remember he has no power. And as long as we call on the name of Jesus, and as long as we praise his name, only thing the enemy can do is flee. So once again, uh, good morning. Good morning all who are uh, virtual and all who are in the house of the Lord this morning. God has given me a word to give to you this morning. And I am grateful to stand here behind this sacred desk once again. This unworthy vessel full of faults and failures, but by his grace and but by his mercy, I am able to stand here and deliver his word. To my pastor, who I love dearly. Glad to see him here this morning. Glad to see our first lady. Amen. 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 First lady messed me up this morning. Her car wasn't out, out in the parking lot. So I thought she wasn't here this morning. Amen. But she rolled in with her hubby. So I'm grateful that you all here this morning. Amen. I just want to talk to you uh, just briefly. And um, I just want to know, can we just be real this morning? Yes, I am a preacher, and, you know, yes, I've been to seminary school. That's how I met Pastor. And, yes, I do truly love the Lord. And I believe wholeheartedly in the birth, the life, the death, and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I've been through some valleys, and I've been over some challenging mountains. And I know what the Lord is able to do, but sometimes my flesh gets the best of me. And sometimes I get tired of being tired. Has anyone been here before? You go to work every day mm, 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 to provide for your family. You try to be the best parent that you can be. You try to be the best spouse that you can be. Every chance you get, you try to help people. You try to be the best servant to our Heavenly Father. And after all this trying to live right and to do right, it seems that others are worry-free. And it seems like others are prospering who don't even know or serve the living God that you and I serve, and you are wondering, when will it be my time? If we can be real for a minute and take off the halo, we can say that we have all been here before. But let's go to the word of God. I'll be coming out the book of Galatians. In the sixth chapter, starting at the seventh verse, the book of Galatians, the sixth chapter, starting with the seventh verse, and I'll be reading out the New King James Version. God's words reads, do not be deceived, God is not mocked, for whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap everlasting life. In verse 9. And let us not grow weary while doing good. For in due season we shall reap 
if we do not lose heart. I just want to talk to you this morning of tired of being tired. Let us pray. Our Father, our God, Lord, we come before your presence once again, Father, just to praise and to lift up your holy and precious name. Lord, we are so grateful, Father God, that you chose to wake us up this morning, Lord. We are so grateful, Lord, that you consistently put food on our table, Lord. We are so grateful, Father God, that you have a, that you put a roof over our head, Father. Lord, we are so grateful, Lord, that we know that all good things come from you. And, Lord, we know it's only by your grace and by your mercy that we are still here today. So, Lord, as I bring forth your word, Lord, please hide me behind the cross, Father, that they do not see me, Lord, but they see you. Lord, I have studied. Lord, I have prepared. But can no preaching take place without your power? So send your spirit right now, Father God, to fill me up like never before, that I may deliver a word, Lord, that we all may leave here better than the way we came in. So, Lord, have your way, Father God. Kick the enemy out of here, Father God, and let us have your way and do your will. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Paul starts here in verse 6, writing to the church of Galatia, instructing them to do good to all. Then he says, if we find our brother and sister struggling with sin, we are supposed to help them in love. Paul also reminds us with caution to be aware that we bring them up without them first bringing us down. Which is Mark Logan's translation and Paul is telling you and I to make sure that we are prayed up and make sure that we are studied up and be mindful of our struggles while we are helping others. Then here in verse 9, which is my focal verse this morning, Paul writes, let us not become weary in well-doing. Paul ain't telling them, just like he is telling you and I this morning, not to get tired of doing what we know we should be doing. Saints, if you believe that God saved you for you, then we are in trouble. God saved you for you and many others. That's why the Great Commission is to go there for and make disciples, loving and helping one another to carry each other's burdens. That is what pleasing the Spirit is all about. And I must say that when I'm doing this and when I'm pleasing God and pleasing the Spirit, I never find myself in the state of being tired of being tired. But I find myself being tired of being tired when I'm trying to please my flesh. And when I'm trying to please others and we get there, says we are never satisfied. We always want more. They always want more. And pleasing the flesh will only lead you and I into the depression and into destruction. Paul, if he wanted to just get to the point and not try to go in love, he would have just said, listen, you have two choices. So to the spirit or so to the flesh, period. But Paul is telling us in love and warning us of the consequences. We have a personal responsibility in helping others who have fallen and who need restoration. We have brothers and sisters who are trapped in a sin that you and I have been delivered from and in a place where they thought that it would never be just how we felt when we were in there. But sometimes we get so nervous of telling others, our brothers and our sisters, about our struggles, thinking that they may run and tell our business. We talked about we got to stop the gossip and start about the gospel. Or they don't come to us because we are too busy worrying about ourselves that we don't have time for no one else but us. We come to church Sunday after Sunday sometimes in the flesh. What I mean by that? We are here, but we can't stop looking at our watches. We are here, but we can't stop thinking about the football game that's coming on later. 
We are here, but we can't stop thinking about going shopping or what we are going to cook for dinner to the point that we don't even give him his praise. We don't hear the word and can't notice that brother, sister, or sister so-and-so just wasn't their self. Or what the pastor said because we were caught up with ourselves. The job of restoration, restoration is often neglected in the church because we are too busy thinking of ourselves and trying to keep up with the Joneses. That we don't have time to restore anyone. And if anyone here who's a little older than I, I really need to know who the Joneses are. Because I heard about them through my grandparents. I never met them. So if you could share with me after church <laughs> of who the Joneses is, I would very appreciate that. Amen. But we can't sow bad habits and reap good character. We can't sow wicked thoughts and reap a clean life. We cannot sow wrong deeds and live righteousness. We can't sow dishonesty and reap integrity. We can't sow into God's people but want to reap the blessings from our God. If we walk in the spirit wholeheartedly, we won't struggle as much with the desires of the flesh and won't find ourselves in the state of tired, being tired all the time. But Paul also wants us to understand that sowing works in all ways. So if you want to sow into the flesh and gratify sinful desires and work evil in the world, we're going to reap that right back in this lifetime and also in the next and then we're going to find ourselves in front of the Heavenly Father and his glory and all his majesty and hear the words, depart from me, I know you not. But if we want to hear, well done, then we must continue to sow in the spirit. But if we sow into the flesh, we will always find ourselves reaping corruption. And we will always find ourselves in the state of impurity idolatry, envy, and being jealous. Do you ever find yourself, in it, all, everything is okay. You're content, everything is going well. But then you get a phone call or you see something on social media where someone got a new house or someone got a new car or someone got something. Then all of a sudden you'd be like, I want a new house. I want a new car. Why God haven't blessed me with that? And then we find ourselves being dissatisfied because we are worried about the flesh. But when we sow into the spirit, we reap eternal life. And what comes with that? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, and faithfulness. Paul was teaching them the difference between the two and asking which one do you want to do? Just as God is asking you and I today, but then Paul goes a little bit further and teaches them about sowing. He says, if you sow sparingly to the spirit, you will also reap sparingly. But if you sow bountifully to the spirit, you will reap bountifully. But I must tell you today that sowing and reaping is a process. Some of us barely give to anyone but want a microwavable reaping process. But it doesn't work like that. Sowing is the beginning and it has to be done cheerfully. God loves a cheerful giver. But reaping is the blessing from sowing but in due season when God sees fit. But now is the question, do you have enough faith in the reaping part? Do you have enough faith knowing that while you are sowing, that God sees and that God's word is true and that he will do what he say that he will do? Because I believe that we get weary and well-doing when we start looking at what others are doing or what others have. But when we are focused on the spiritual, we start being grateful for what we do have. Yeah, I have a roof over my head. It may not be the biggest roof. But I'm grateful for what I have. That I'm grateful for that I'm not sleeping outside. I may not have lobster and steak every night, 
but I'm grateful for the food that I have in my refrigerator because some people don't even have a refrigerator. I may not have Gucci and Prada and Christian Dior to wear every day, but I'm grateful that I have clothes to put on my back because some don't have a change of clothes. So I'm just going to be grateful. I may not have a Porsche and I may not have a Range Rover, but I'm grateful for my Chevy that I have that it gets me everywhere that it needs to get me. Because some don't have a car and some don't have car fare to ride a bus. But when I get focused on the spiritual things, I don't have time to worry about what I don't have. And then when I have time to worry about what I do have, I realize I have more than enough and I have enough to give to someone else. So what I do have, I can even help someone else. We get so caught up in what we don't have and not being grateful for what we do have. Tomorrow can reflect the decisions that we make today. So today, let's start walking in the spirit so that we don't get weary and well-doing and tired of being tired. But there will be a dynamic transformation in your life. And we start living under his presence and in his presence. And when you do that, you will become new. And when you become new, you will know it. Others will know it. And more importantly, heaven will be aware of the transforming power of the indwelling Holy Spirit in your life. And then you fully can live out 2 Corinthians 5, 17, that therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have come new. So I came to tell you this morning, if the enemy has you feeling tired of being tired, that there is hope in Jesus. Don't give up, but give in to him who can do all things. I heard a preacher say one time, he says, I'm not giving up. He says, I'm going to punch the devil as long as I can make a fist. If I lose my arms, I will kick the devil as long as I have legs. If I lose my legs, I will bite the devil and when I lose my teeth, I will gum him until Jesus come back. But what I'm going to do is not give up my well-doing. Martin Luther King Jr. said it a little differently. He said that if you can, can't fly, then run. If you can't run, then walk. If you can't walk, then crawl. But whatever you do, you have to keep on moving forward. The goal isn't to fight sin, but to die to it and live for Christ. Ask yourself today, is my mind fixed on how I can please God? My Lord and my Savior in everything, in everything that I do. Do I long to worship him? Can you honestly say that you have unconditionally surrendered your life to him? Or am I still running my life my way? And if you keep doing the same things, you're going to keep getting the same results. Tired of being tired. But before I go, I just want to break down verse 9, which is my circle verse. And it starts off by saying, let us. Preachers, deacons, ushers, praise team, and saints, we are the us. We are doing ministry full time. And at that time, sometimes we can grow weary of the work if we lose sight of who we are doing it for. I wasn't studying all week for pastor. I didn't wake up this morning and get myself prepared for pastor. I'm not standing up here for the deacon. But once we realize who we are doing the work for, and we realize that this is just a little bit of what I'm giving back to him who does everything for me, we cannot lose focus 
and we cannot become tired of being tired. And second, to lose sight of the harvest until the one who called you to do it. Because we have to remember we were once out there doing what we wanted to do, how we wanted to do it. And unfortunately, we loved doing what we were doing. Because we were blind and could not see. But when he touched us, and he allowed us to see what he sees, and he allows us to stop doing some of the things that we used to do, and he touched us, and he made us to who we are today, how can we not give him back what he deserves? And then he goes on to say, let us, but then it says, not become weary in doing good. We are called to do good. Anything that builds up, furthers the mission, expands the kingdom, can become weary if our motives become false. And that's a sermon right there in itself about our motives. Our motives has to be nothing less but pleasing our Lord and Savior. And then it says, for at the appropriate time, at the proper time. We serve an on-time God. It may not be when we want it, but it will definitely be when we need it. And just remember how much he has done, and if we do well, we will hear well done. We will have an eternity of blessings. We will reap harvest. We are called to bear fruit, and this is spiritual fruit. But the promise here is that there will be a time when any effort of doing good will produce a visible result that will be experienced by the soul if we do not give up. It will, saints, it will be sad if any of us begin the good work well and not finish it well. Because of a trial that calls us to give up. I know when I'm called home that I want to know 100% that I fought the good fight. That I have finished the race. And that I have kept the faith. So until he comes down and cracks that sky, Lord, I'm going to keep pushing through. Because I know that if I have, you is going to get better. So I'm going to count it all joy. Always remember life is going to get better. No matter what weapon is formed against me, it's going to get better. That it will not prosper and that it's going to get better. So the next time that we feel tired of being tired and you may feel like giving up, just remember it's going to get better. The next time you feel like walking away from this race, trust his heart that it's going to get better. The next time you look at your bank account and it may not look good in your eyes, just know it's going to get better. The next time you find yourself crying in the midnight hour, just remember that he's never left you nor has he forsaked you and that it's going to get better. I don't know about you, but it's almost time for our Lord and Savior to crack that sky. And he's coming back for those who kept the good fight. Even when you get tired of being tired, he's coming back for you and he's coming back for me. And at that time, we will understand everything that we are going to better by and by. 1 Corinthians 15, 58 says, Therefore, my beloved brother, be steadfast and movable, always abound in the work of the Lord. Knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Stop being tired of being tired. Stop. Stop. Stop being tired. Stop being tired songwriter said I've been praying for Jesus a long time and I'm not tired yet 
I've been praying by day and praying by night. And I'm not tired yet. What a mighty God we serve. What a word from the Lord. If conviction hasn't hit your heart today, we serve a mighty God. Had he not shown himself, you wouldn't have known. The Bible tells us if we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that Jesus Christ died, that you shall be saved. Stop trying to put things off, trying to get things corrected, because you can't. He has to do it for you. We ask now as the doors of the church is open, that you give your life to Christ now. Let him take care of it. The doors of the church is open. Second call. You may have given your Christ life to Christ, but you've been out there for a while, and you just need a refreshing of who you are. We ask that you would come back to the Lord. He's there waiting for you. While you were waiting for him, he was waiting for you. Doors of the church is open. Second call. Let us pray. Father God, you are awesome. You have given us the word, Lord, instructions and directions on how we should go. What you weep is what you sow. So we ask, Lord, that you give us the strength to do your job. Give us the strength to do what you have called us for, Lord. Love one another. Love our neighbors. We ask, Lord, that you give us the strength to be able to go out and carry out your word. Make disciples of them so they'll know who you are. We thank you, Lord, for all you have done. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the church sing. Amen. Amen. Amen.